Hey, 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 what do you say? We have the amazing, incredible, talented, sweet I do's just for you's in the EE event ensemble spotlight today. Brandy Blackford. <laughs> you wore blue. If I'd known you were going to wear blue, I would have worn some more blue. You've got pretty blue stripes. We're good. It's all good. I know, I know. But you're like, you got this like royal thing going on, you know? This is my favorite color. Is it? It okay. is. Well, for cause, because it looks amazing on you. And I'm going to just Thanks. try and not block you and, and see if I can get my lighting right. But uh, again, very, very excited to have you here. Um, I'm, I'm not going to double dip today. We're going to talk about sweet I do's. But <laughs> Sounds you need to come back and I need to get you in the spotlight for the Arizona Online Wedding Show. Bingo. You betcha. Definitely want to do a second um, meaning of the minds regarding that because I think it's important Perfect. and powerful. But by the same token, there's something that's coming up. So I'm kind of like, you know, putting a date stamp on this because Events Ensemble has the planners panel coming up mm -hmm. and you're on that panel. I am and I'm super excited. Ooh, I have that effect on people. So woohoo. <laughs> um, so happy to have you join us. So now that we've got the business out of the way, um, the panel is another thing that we can chat about, but I really want to keep the focus on you. But for our audience, just so you understand, you know, when people interview someone, whether it's a DJ or a photographer, or in this case, a planner, it is highly complimentary that that individual is not just, you know, valuable in the eyes of her clients, but also in the industry and being on a panel discussion is not taken lightly. And so I just want everyone to know that of the 300 planners plus or minus in the group, you know, you're one of, I think five that are on the panel. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's because you bring to the party a unique experience, a Thank unique you. process that is, I don't want to say it's unlike other planners. It's just unlike most, planners. Correct. So, so tell me about the sweet I do and how you do that. So I'm one of those people that I like having the plan A and the plan B and the plan C because I need that. Like that's, that's my heart and that's my soul. But I also believe in hiring people that do their job extremely well and letting them do their job. So as long as we all talk together and we're all on the same page, we're all on team couple, you do your job, and I'll just manage that whole picture. Oh, you, you know I'm trying to bite my tongue here because I've interviewed and I have spoke with and I certainly have worked with many planners that think they are the cat's meow. That they <laughs> are the party, that they are the, the, the rise and fall of all that happens on that day, and they control it um, to the nth degree. And, and to hear, without my prompting, that your preference is to hire a professional, w mm -hmm. regardless of what it is, whether it's a caterer or a florist, and let that professional do what they do best. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's the hallmark of a good planner. I, you know what? I do a lot of things well, but I don't do everything well and I would rather just let you all shine and let you let you do that thing that you sold those clients on and I'll just take that backside and I'll be there to manage the crises and I'll be there to handle the people and and maybe coax some toddler down the processional line <laughs> but you know what I'm not going to be there to spotlight the cake or play the first dance song and know when it's time to fade it out that's not my job that's that, that's not what I'm good at. <laughs> but there are plenty of things that you are good at because if I'm the DJ, then I know my, this is my box, right? And, and I know what to play and when to play and what to say and when to say and how to, you know, move the room and all of that. But there are lots of other things that you manage that the florist doesn't uh, for obvious reasons or the DJ doesn't or even the caterer doesn't. And that's where you, where you come in. Mm -hmm. I like to take all of our pieces because we're all a piece, like we're all an individual piece. And I like to take all those pieces and just put them together into one amazing experience for our clients and their guests and their families. And if we're all 
in the know and we all have the floor plan and we all know what we need to do and when we need to do it, we can shine without having to sit there and be like, oh, well, I didn't know the photographer wasn't in the room or what do you mean mom's in the bathroom? I've already announced we're doing the mother-son dance. Like if we all know what's going on, then we can all make it amazing and seamless and make it appear absolutely perfect even when there's issues. You know, I like to think of it in two ways. One is an ensemble, because that's obviously EE <laughs> event ensemble, so that's nice. But the truth is, when you talk about the each individual pieces, it really sounds like a mosaic. <laughs> and it's, it's only by the master artisan who brings the mosaic, individual, the separate pieces together that actually creates, uh, you know, a beautiful canvas. Yes, I agree with you, but it takes all of us. It isn't just one person shoving the pieces into the place they think that they fit the best. It takes all of us doing what we do well. And that goes back to your style to let them do until mm -hmm. they do wrong. <laughs> until they do wrong, and then, well, we have to have a chat. <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of curious about the pieces. What is your process regarding the pieces? What if a couple comes to you and says, I've already got my DJ, or I already have my caterer, or I already have my florist, or they have nothing. I mean, does it matter to you whether they've started or whether they're, they need everything or do they only need sup? It, it truly doesn't matter to me. I love getting to meet new people. And over the years, I've been doing this for almost 11 years now. Over the years- oh, wait, 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 did you start when you were 10? You would think, no. <laughs> Do you see these girls right here? No. <laughs> um, but I have been doing this for 11 years, and I've worked with a lot of great people, and I've worked with some okay people. Over the years, I've learned that if you take it seriously, you'll make sure that you have that website and that insurance, and that you'll talk to me and won't feel like I'm taking over your turf. And as long as we can play nice together, I love meeting new people because there's new people all the time, or there's old people that have a new offering, or they've brought on an associate that's fabulous. I love that, but I also have a group of amazing people that if I can get just a little bit of information out of the client, I can send them one or two options that are gonna work amazingly well for them. So you know which option really works best, but you don't just say it's Tony or it's Sandy or it's Sally, but instead you actually give them choices. I do because just because I think that person A, Bob, is gonna be the best fit for this couple, they may hate Bob. They may not like Bob's laugh. They may not like that Bob has a mustache. Like, I don't know, but it could very well be that Bob isn't available. And I do try to vet that, like I do try to reach out to the people and say, hey, Scott, I have a wedding at Mama Lucia on December 4th. Can you help me out? And if the answer is no, then I'll be like, all right, that's great. Let me think who else is a fabulous entertainer that might be available. And then we go through that process because I want to take that burden on for me, not for the client. I just don't want to shove a bunch of names at them and say, here you go, go figure it out. That's, that's not what they hired me to do for them. And so that's part of your sweet I do process. Mm -hmm. is that it is. You're not it just is. going to give them homework and say, here, shovel this onto you. Now you go figure it out mm -hmm. and let me know what you decide, but that you're part of that process. Yes. Yes. If they which, interview, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, which, if we are partners, y'all need to reach out and give me your new stuff. Because if I don't know you've got a new offering or a new price list, or new headshots, or a new phone number, or a new website. Like if I don't know you have new stuff, I can't pass it on. And I can't, oh my gosh, Scott has this amazing virtual wedding option for you. And I know you had to drop your guest list from 150 people down to 30, but we can still get the rest of those people in your wedding. Let me give you his information. You know, there's a little brown thing on your nose right here. Just might want to wipe that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just you. For example, Curtis, he has amazing yard games, but I don't know what his current inventory is. So I need to reach out with him and be, hey, Curtis, how many sets of yard games do you have? Have you thought about adding this one? And then we talk, but that's it. It's a talk. It's a communication. It's, it's us getting to know each other because if I don't know you, I'm not going to refer you. <laughs> but that also puts you in a better position 
to mm-hmm. have more options so when you meet with your couple that you can help them. Well, it's the like, know, and trust factor, and they have to trust that what I'm giving them is the best information. If I don't have it, I can't give it. I like that. So is that something that you think makes you unique, or is there something else that you would like to say, this is really what makes Sweet I Do's different? So I would like to say that every planner We'll, we'll be out there looking out for their clients, vetting those vendors, making sure everybody's professional and, and, and in the know. I'm a personal person. So I'm there and I tell my clients from the minute they sign their contract until long after the wedding, if there's something you need to talk to me about, do it. It's okay. If you need to vent about mom, and the fact that she is insisting that you do glittery gold flowers and you don't want them, <laughs> we'll talk about it. And we'll figure out a solution so that mom feels okay and feels heard, but you still under, you still get the not gold glittery flowers. <laughs> so it's, it's a personal thing for me. Like I get very emotionally invested in my clients. I'm friends with most of them years and years and years after the fact just because it's a personal connection. I truly care about my clients' Bengal cats and the fact that they're little imps and they will sit and write all over her wedding stationery and what is she gonna do now? (laughs) Like it matters to me. It matters to me that these poor couples are sitting there and are being like, we have 400 people we need to invite but we can only have 50. What options do you have for me? And it's not an instant, let me fix it. It's let me commiserate with you. Let me empathize with you. Let me, let me fix that emotional side of it and then we'll fix the rest. So coach and counselor along with- A little bit, not, not a licensed one, no, <laughs> but a little bit. <laughs> now you, you mentioned licensed and I heard the word insurance earlier mm-hmm. in your conversation. Um, how does that play a factor in what's going on? Do you only ask for the insurance when, say, the property requires insurance? Or is that just a standard, all of your team um, that comes on board for this particular event is required to have a certificate of insurance? So I have been advised by my legal team that with everything that is going on, our our in-pandemic normal, because <laughs> I'm not going to say it's our new normal because it's not our new normal. It's just what we're going through right now. I've been advised that everybody who comes on needs to have insurance. I didn't used to be that person. I'm that person now. It's actually written into my contract. And if they, if the client chooses to work with someone who isn't insured, I have a waiver that they have to sign. And there are additional meetings and potentially fees if we're working with frienders, because I've seen too much that can go wrong and I, I've got to protect everybody, including the client and myself. Yeah, well, I'm totally biased. I'm in 100% agreement. I'm pleased that whenever I perform, I have a multi-million dollar policy mm-hmm. that covers my performance. And I've been requested to add additional waivers regarding COVID. And I know that some properties, I will not name, but some properties won't even let you unload your equipment until they've received a copy, preferably in advance of the event. But even still, they'll meet you at the loading dock and say, if you, we don't have this on file and you can't unload until we have that in hand. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a very correct statement. And more and more value venues are requiring it. And frankly, it's a part of doing business. Like, I understand there's loads of expenses to starting a new venture and starting a small business and there isn't always cash there and, and, and things get hard, especially when you're out of work, but there are certain things you got to have and that's one of them. Like, you've got to be licensed in your city or licensed in your county and you got to have insurance. You, you just, you just got to. <laughs> I like that. So let's get back to the client experience for a moment. So I know that you were nice enough to say that if somebody was having a virtual event that the party favors could help with that. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody wanted a big video screen, I'm 99% sure you would have went, ah, that's the thing Scott does because the big video screen is my thing. Yep. What is your thing? That is when somebody says, because they rarely say I need a planner. 
I mean, it happens, but usually they're going to give you some other clue, some other indication that would make every vendor, photographer, videographer, florist, whomever they are, when they hear this, when they hear the client say this, they think branding. Well, I wish I had like pulled a whole bunch of my vendor friends and said, hey, <laughs> what makes you refer me? Um, I, I do think part of it is, is that I, I specialize in wedding management. So I will help a client out with full planning. I will help a client out with partial planning, but my heart lives with what used to be called day of coordination. We don't call it that anymore. It's a lie. You can't coordinate a wedding in a day. It just doesn't happen. But <laughs> I do specialize in wedding management and I am able to very quickly with my portal, my client experience to very quickly take all of those pieces and all of those vendors and put them together and we go and we know where, where the holes are and we know how to fill them in. And I know who I can call on if somebody happens to be sick. Like I have a very extensive network, most planners do, but I try really hard to maintain that relationship even outside of it. So I'll reach out and I'll be like, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> You're doing good. You're still in business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, all of us, all of us have heard the stories about. Well, I paid them. I gave them their balance, paid in full, and they're nowhere to be seen. And yep. it's really, really tragic. And that's why you want to go with a reputable company that has insurance, has a business license, and all of that. But even then, things can go wrong, mm -hmm. or askew, astray. You know, slightly off you know, the, the plan, if you will. T tell us a good story about your latest plan B or C. Oh my goodness. Well, my <laughs> latest one, <laughs> we're, we're still working through plan B and plan C on my latest one. So I actually have a client coming up in March and this lovely, these, these lovely, this lovely couple, they're so sweet. They have been planning through COVID they, they're not a postponed wedding, they're not a canceled wedding, they're not a rescheduled wedding, but they've been planning through COVID and it's been hard for them. Um, their venue coordinator was furloughed, so they had no communication for a little while. We had, they're getting married at a church and their reception's at, at a resort and the church all of a sudden decided that because of what's going on, we can't have any non-secular music. At all, none, at all. At we church. have a, a church. So we have a not very, the reception, just the ceremony music. Just the ceremony music. But because of what's going on, they don't want to bring in a lot of outside musicians mm. to be in their church. So they've got a very short, very short list <laughs> of songs. And this client isn't that. Like, she's like, these aren't, these don't mean anything to me. These songs are, these songs are the songs that my mom got married to. <laughs> And while they're classics and they're amazing songs, they're just not her, which is perfectly okay. But she calls me and she's in tears. Like, we got tears. I can hear the tears streaming down the face. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And she tells me what's going on. I'm like, that's okay. We got plenty of time. Let's go find another church. Wow. We got this. We're good. So wow. we went looking for another church and we found a church that was so super duper happy to have her super flexible with everything that they're doing and now we're, we're plan b in it and then we've got on paper a plan c if we've got more mandates that come down from the government that restrict our gathering even more we've even got a plan d if they actually don't allow us to gather at all and we've got those written out they've been disseminated to the various vendors that need to know what they are all of those vendors are on board we're good so she knows all these months in advance, what's going to happen if this happens, if that happens? She's got it all. And she's, she's like, I can go into the holidays now knowing I don't have to do any wedding planning. Like, I can actually enjoy Thanksgiving and Christmas. And anytime somebody asks me a question about the wedding, I have an answer. She's excited. I'm excited. I'm she happy that she gets to take she, it off. She has it all because she has you. Mm-hmm. You know, there have been things that she said, she's been like, oh, I wouldn't have known to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Well, of course you wouldn't. This is the first time you've gotten married. I've done like 500 of these. <laughs> Maybe not that many, but. <laughs> it, 
<laughs> Whenever the subject of this is the first time you've gotten married comes up, I always like to add when it's true and the only time. Exactly. Now, if it happens to be their second or their fifth wedding, then that's, we, we just move along. We but, have a different right. discussion, yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned plan D. I'm assuming that plan E means elope and plan P means postpone. Well, so plan E is actually elope. They are getting married regardless that day. Mm-hmm. So we are either getting married with just moms and dads and whatever the church will allow and that's it. And we're doing the rest of the party later. And that is our plan. Like, that's it. Like we're doing it. And we have it all in agreement with everybody that these are the dates we need to know by, and this is what we're going to do. And this is how much money gets to come back. And this is how much more it's going to cost you. Like we have all of that in play so that she can make informed decisions without having to be like, Oh my gosh, the governor just restricted us to 50 people she's already got her guest list winnowed down to those 50 people so if we have to do a quickie we can move it yeah i love i love the flexibility and i love the creativity as as the dj music guy my whole my total focus was how do we fix the music and you just pulled the rug right out from underneath and said let's find another church well we did everything we could to try to fix the music we went up the chain of command as far as we could go and there was no fixing so this meant and i i asked her i said how does the music mean more to you than the location like which one means more and she's like the music i have the music is my thing i am a youth choir minister that i music i need the music and i'm like all right let's go find another place that makes total sense. And, and you only get that by asking good questions and being, well, I'm being trusted. Like she had to trust me to know that I wasn't just going to let her founder, that it wasn't going to be like, Oh, you don't like your church. Deal with it. You <laughs> hired me for wedding management. So this isn't my problem. This has nothing to do with like the day of management. So not my problem. No, mm-mm. that's not what my clients get with me. No. <laughs> So wedding management is day of? Yes. Okay. And what is budget and vendors and venue and date and and planning and all of that called then? No, it's still part of it. Like it's still, but I just, I manage the wedding. I'm not trying to just coordinate the day. Ah, okay. I got it. That's important. It is. It is. I wish we had somebody like you when I got married 30, 30 years ago. <laughs> you weren't born yet. Well, I was, but I was just a little. Just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious. You've done 500 of these things. Well, not that many, but. Well, but you've done a few. I've done, a, I've done one or two. You've done one or two. <laughs> What's your favorite wedding day moment? So. I used to, like my favorite, favorite moment used to be when the bride or the second partner stepped out onto the aisle to walk up to her groom or to her, her partner. That used to be my favorite, like that, that was it. But then I started convincing a lot of my couples to do a first look with dad. Okay, wait, just, just. Let this moment breathe like a good glass of mm-hmm. wine before we drink it. I know what a first moment is, mm-hmm. but just in case everybody doesn't, what is a first moment? So a first moment is the first time the clients, the couple sees each other all decked out on their wedding day. And it's, and it's not always at the aisle is what you're saying. No. No, no, no. They can, they can prearrange it. Um, and it doesn't even have to be the first time that day. Like, they can wake up together, they can go to breakfast together, they can go for a hike together. It's the first time they see each other all decked out. Right, all decked out. All beautiful and amazing and handsome and gorgeous. It's the first time they see that. And it usually is about an hour, an hour and a half before the ceremony. So they know that this is like, this is real. Mm -hmm. Like, this is happening. And now you're saying, let's do this with dad. Is that what I'm hearing? So... I've started asking clients if their dad is there and if they have a great relationship with dad, if they want to do a first look with dad. 
because usually it's the first time daddy is seeing his little girl or his boy all dressed up and ready to make that commitment to somebody else to live together and to love together for the rest of their lives. And those moments, holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> and, and unique because, again, I haven't heard of it. So I'm assuming mother and son, too, if that's the case. If, if mom wants to do it, usually mom's a little not quite, like not quite there, but if I've had moms do it do, but it's usually it's daddies and daddies and their kids. Interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the moment, the photographer. That's, that's the one that tugs at my heartstrings. Like that's the one that's just like, oh, <laughs> because you can kind of see that whole I almost feel like I have a, a view into dad's head and I can see all the moments with dad growing up. Like dad watching them ride their bike for the first time. Dad watching them go on their first date. Dad watching them go away to college. Like I, you can see all those moments flickering and now it's dad watching them all dressed up and ready to commit to the love of their lives. And it's like, oh. <laughs> Gonna make me cry. Stop. You know, I have, I have a daughter and one of these days might get married. So see, and now you'll need to do that. You'll need to do that with her because you'll do, you'll be thinking of all those firsts with her. And then you'll be like, now I get to watch her do her first with the love of her life. And you will be the one that will remind me to make sure that that's something we do. Yes. <laughs> see how that works. I, I think that I just asked you out on a date for my daughter. Hey, wedding. I'm ready. I will, whatever the date is, it'll go right in here. We're good. She needs a boyfriend first, so. Well, don't rush that. <laughs> <laughs> I told mine she can't get married until she's at least 35, so. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Although that is, for many couples, the standard for getting married is post-20s. It's we are late getting 20s, older. early 30s. We are getting a little bit older, and we're not getting quite married quite as young, not as we're getting ready to head into college or, or go into our specialties or join the career force. Like we are getting a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brandy, for spending a few minutes with us today and to get an insight. Yours has been very unique because we got business side, we got couples side. We really got a really good blend mm -hmm. of who you are and what you do but Thanks. as i mentioned early on you're going to come back and we're going to talk about the arizona online wedding show Woohoo! i'm yes. so excited exactly and when is the next one by the way the next one as of the recording uh, that we're doing right now it is january 24th 2021 okay. and you're looking for vendors yes so please if you are thinking that you need clients trust me you do um, the big online, the big shows have canceled. So all of the January, February shows in the Valley have now canceled their show. It's official. They have canceled their shows, but engagements aren't going to stop y'all. Like right. people are still going to get engaged over Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. And I actually think we might see more engagements than we have in the past because now couples have had to quarantine together. They've been through the bad and now they're ready to celebrate it and they need us. Like they need us to help them celebrate that love. And I love that. Thank you so very much, Brandy. What a treat. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.